recently bought this Tormach 770N CNC metal. And um, look at the upgrade capabilities. I'm trying to build a fourth axis for it without having to spend $3,000 to get one from Tormach directly. I want to be able to machine multiple sides of the part without having to re-indicate and lose my zero. And so what I'm going to show you today is we got all the parts we bought set up and then we got all the aluminum and we're going to show you the design and everything you're going to need to buy. This is just part one of what will be like a three part series of the design and parts you need in video one and then part two will be actually machining all these parts, how do you set everything up and we're making all these parts on the Torma and then the third video will be kind of like an installation, how do you actually use Pathpilot, how easy is it for Pathpilot to detect your DIY fourth axis. Pathpilot has pretty good built-in control for an A axis for a fourth axis. And really, as long as you just throw a stepper driver in there, um, the only thing you could ever configure is your belt ratio, your drive ratio. If it's not the same as the Tormach MicroArt, then you have to tell it that. Um, it should be a little tricky on the file. So we're going to try to copy the MicroArt ratio so we don't have to mess with anything. It's just plug and play. So here is everything we bought for this build. And you know, the centerpiece is this harmonic drive, right? This is kind of, everything is built around this. The ratios, the drive. And so this basically takes this really high rotational input and you can see how slowly the outside spins when I crank this thing. I mean, it's a 51 to one gear ratio. And so you, can, you basically bolt the outside to your fourth axis. And so use these bolts. This is your motor, the higher RPM in, and then this face will spin 51 times slower than that. So you can see the inside spinning really fast, while the outside spins very slow. And then we've bolted a little 122 3D printed pulley to the back. And we 3D printed it to start, but once it's working, we'll probably actually machine one um, with the ball end mill on the fourth axis. We've got a stepper motor, and this is just like a Uno you know, 17. It's pretty, you can use really any stepper motor you want. It doesn't really matter. Just pick one that's got the right wattage that you want to use. And so you got to make sure the wattage of the motor and the wattage of your stepper driver match. And so like, I'll have a link to the two that I bought um, in the description. And then I bought just some four wire stepper motors. They have four wires. Look at this four wire cable. It's shielded. It's pretty nice. Um, I believe it's, yeah, 16 gauge. Added in a waterproof connector. And so this is going to get bolted into the kind of the edge of the enclosure so the enclosure can stay watertight. And what's really nice is we actually bought the TE Connectivity makes this plug. And this is the exact same plug that Tormach uses on the MicroArt. And so this literally just plugs straight into the side of the enclosure. And as long as you get the pin out correctly, it's gonna spin in the right direction. If it spins the wrong way, it's really easy to just swap some of the wires um, in this connection here. And that connector will be linked as well. We've got a 34 tooth pulley, a 200 tooth belt, and then we have a huge pile of way more nuts and bolts than I will need, but gotta buy it in bulk, huh? So we've got all kinds of like M4, M3, quarter 20, every piece of hardware we need. Get some aluminum, some big chunks, and this part that we're keeping from V1 in the first draft of the fourth axis. We're going to reuse this part because it came out pretty nice, and we're also reusing this motor mount. This is another part that 
worked pretty well. We don't want to have to redo. So this is what the electrical panel looks like. We've got XYZ stepper drivers, and then the fourth one in the back there is the one that I added. See, it doesn't quite match. Uh, the Tormach drivers, if you actually bought it from them, they have like the right connectors. Tormach kind of charges like double what they should be. You know, I got this one for like less than 50 bucks off of Amazon. The driver, the stepper wires, they connect straight in, but the signal wires, I had to just cut the ribbon and then I looked at the pin out and matched it up. It really wasn't that hard. You know, you're only connecting um, three or four lines and then jumping two. It's really just looking through the documentation and just remembering that pin one is this red one and this is X, Y, Z, and A, all in the same ribbon cable. And that really helped me figure out the numbering scheme. Once you know which direction the numbers go, the A axis is like pins 19 through 22 or some shit. Um, once you get that in there, really, all the cables are already there. It's really easy to install the stepper driver. Um, and then on the bottom of the electrical panel is the connector. And so we can just natively use this nice, really nice locking connector. And Pathpilot will just immediately recognize the A axis. This is the 3D model. This is the design. Modeled it up in on shape and kind of walk you through each of the pieces. And, uh, it has shares some resemblance to the Promox MicroArt, similar form factor, but kind of show you some of the differences, some of the manufactured methods that are planned for this. So this is the design. This is on shape. I used on shape to make this model. You can see how similar it is to the micro arc, to Tormox micro arc. The form factor is close, but it's got custom designs for all the parts. Got this 3D printed rear end to waterproof the stepper motor, and it accounts for this long length stepper motor. Tormach uses a shorter one. You can see it's got two pieces to make up the main body. The full depth of this pocket is two and a half inches, and Tormach's not really up for that kind of challenge. Now, I don't want to go anything longer than one and a half inches length of cut. So both of these parts are an inch and a half in length. So the stock that I bought is actually an inch and a half. So I know that I can machine that really easily. If I need to do a full depth pocket or do the outside, I can find a cutter, you know, that'll hold its own. It's gonna be an aggressive cut, maybe an inch and a half. So we'll probably step it down and do multiple depths. Um, we'll see what the Tormach's made of. So we have these two main body pieces, threaded holes to screw the harmonic drive into. The body pieces will screw together. Just like the Tormach version, we need an adapter plate. We need something to go in between the fourth axis and the table. My mill has no fixture plate or anything. I'm working with T-slots. So the T-slot holes don't line up very well with anything. I don't want to have screws inside the enclosure. I want to have the screws way out here on the outsides. And so I need this adapter plate. So I bolt this plate into the, the table and then I can screw these into the adapter plate. And what will most likely happen is I'll probably dial the adapter plate in, get this straight, then bolt the fourth axis in and get that straight as well going to be some assembly tolerance and some play in those bolts and so we'll want to make sure that it's dialed in straight every time we put it on the table. Another little thing to note, you know we saw that motor mount earlier, it actually mounts to these slots. These slots are how we tension the belt. So you can see this is in its fully tensioned position. And if we hide the main body, we just see these screws, you see the belt, Fully interaction there. 
and so these little this motor mount will slide. It's really important to get the backlash out of that belt drum. All these fasteners are pretty specific lengths. These belts have very close clearance to the tails, the bolts. The belt and the bolts are really close. Um, so you want to be careful to make sure there's no rubbing that will fray or destroy the belt. And here we see our um, adapter plate. This is called like a chuck back plate for a lathe. It's what it normally called a back plate. This is going to need a little bit of design work. Um, I'll show you that issue in a second. But it's actually really hard to get these bolts in place. And so we're going to need to somehow improve the design. We'll get some ideas. All right, so I wanted to show you this interference, this issue with this bolt. You can see how the bolt is intended to assemble, right? It needs to thread into the backside. And then the chuck will be right here and it'll thread into the chuck. And the issue I have is, you know, it works fine on the plate, but when you actually assemble it to the harmonic drive, that bolt becomes captive. You actually can't remove that bolt. And that is a really big issue because there's gonna be fasteners all along the outside and all these, that ring of bolt holes. And we can't just leave these in here. In order to actually assemble a chuck, you need to do them one by one by one from being out of the machine all the way in. If you leave these in here, they can, you know, some of them will be loose, they can hit the screws and you'll jam up the harmonic drive bolt against bolt and you know, the belt will start slipping. So we really, this needs to be way simpler. There's, it shouldn't be any harder than a micro arc to assemble. And so what we're gonna try to do is put a spacer in here between the two parts and space it off just a little bit. And hopefully that will give us enough space to pop that bolt out. And so we're gonna really just mock up that spacer without doing any design. We're just gonna make it on the, on the lathe. Um, and that'll be part of the next video as well. Yeah, that's the whole thing. So we're gonna be 3D printing the back end and machining these three components in the next video.